Uh, so firstly, Colin, thank you for, for coming and speaking to me today. Obviously, Colin Henry, uh, ex-former player for Blackburn, um, Scotland's captain as well. Uh, we'll touch into all that later. But just start off, what, what are sort of your career highs? What's been your best moment when you were playing? Oh, um, I've been blessed, actually. Um, obviously, winning the Premiership with Blackburn, 95. Um, it's really difficult to put into words what that was like because when you look at the clubs that's only won it, um, I suppose you could put Leic Leicester's in the same category as us. Uh, although we did progress year in, year out, leading up to winning the Premiership. But you're looking at the big boys, really. You know, the the, the Man United, the Chelsea's, the Arsenal's. Um, and then latterly, of course, Man City and then Liverpool as well. So you got some big, big clubs in there, but that was a great honour for me. Um, in England, where most of my career was. Uh, in Scotland, the treble for Rangers, Glasgow Rangers. Um, and as sweet as it sounds, we're in the league at Parkhead, Celtic's home. Um, doesn't it get really any sweeter than that? So that was the treble with Glasgow Rangers and the, the period I was there, which again was an honour for me. And to, to play for such a great football club, um, I think. But all in all, I think a lot of people will remember will remember a lot of different things throughout my career that know me well. But it's captain in Scotland in the World Cup in 1998, walking out in the opening game against Brazil. Is, I mean, it shouldn't really have been me. It should have been Gary McAllister who was injured. He got injured about six months earlier. But for me, it was a great honour. Um, so I've been really blessed, Ash, as far as. Being successful in my career, it's been, I wouldn't change it for anything. Um, I wouldn't wish to do anything at all within my career um, any different. I, I'm, I'm really, really happy and glad and, and quite content with what I've achieved. Uh, I've seen the picture of that game, I just touched on that Brazil game. Uh, I believe R9 Ronaldo was playing in that game. Is that right? Yeah, Ronaldo, the original Ronaldo played. He played up top. He, he, um, there was a bit of a discussion prior to the, to, to the World Cup as to whether he should have played or not. Um, I think Brazil wanted him to play and obviously a player of that capability is world class, well, probably the best player in the world at that point in time. But there was a slight injury issue over him and I think Nike, who was his main sponsor, didn't want him to play. So, but he played and didn't score. Um, so, yeah, it was a great honour, again, for me to play against such a player. But, and we did okay, you know. In the game itself, we got beat 2-1 by Brazil opening the game of the World Cup. And the, and the crazy thing was that when the, when the draw got made, you think to yourself, you know, we could take three or four in this opening game and, and put us real, right under pressure. But on the upside, it was playing against the world champions in a full house in, in, in Paris. And as the game went... We thought to ourselves, you know, if it, if it goes 80, 20 percent possession, they maybe keep the ball for 10, 12 passes and then a Rivaldo or, or Bebeto or Ronaldo decides to ping one with his right peg, top left hand corner, goalkeeper's not got a chance. You, you, you stand back and you, 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 you clap them for that. You, you know, you congratulate them on a great goal, but it wasn't like that at all. They scored from a corner kick after six minutes. And then they get an own goal in the second half. It was like gutting, really, because we did come close. We did come quite close to um, causing an upset in the opening game. But uh, great honour, great great feelings. It really, really was. Must have done a, a decent job to keep Ronaldo. I think that's a, an accolade that not many defenders you know, can have. But uh, yeah. speaking of that, you played as a central defender mainly. But in your younger career, I believe you played as a striker. Yeah, I started as a striker. Um, I signed for Dundee, the first club was a striker and then there was a change of management and uh, the change of manager decided that that striker he didn't see in me. He said, right, what we'll do is try as a centre-back and for me that was more comfortable. That was something that was probably an easier position for me to play. The only thing is I did enjoy scoring goals. So... When I did initially make the change and when I did get to Blackburn in 87 and throughout that earlier years before I went to City in 89, I was up and down quite a bit, striker, centre-back, striker, centre-back. And I went to City and really more or less 
cemented that position um, for my career. Um, and then I went back to Blackburn, of course, in '91. But it was it was it was it was good. I mean, when it lasted, playing as a striker, I used to enjoy it. And and these games that's coming up. I've got to play at the back, Ash, but <laughs> I, might have, I might have a venture up front for five, ten minutes. We'll see what happens. We'll see how we go in the game, to be fair, I think. I think, I think we'd be open for a, a venture forward, anything to, to get us yeah. excited. Yeah. Um, as a defender, from what I've read, you were described as someone who's highly respected, but also feared. Would you say that's fair? It's a different ball game now. I mean, with, through, through, throughout what we've just gone through with COVID over the last 12 months, um, Last summer, I think there's a lot of reruns of Euro 96, the World Cup 98, everything, Blackburn winning the league in 95. All these reruns were done. And I, and I actually watched for the first time back the Euro 96 game, Scotland, England. We got beat 2-0, the infamous Gaza goal. I watched it. And for the first time ever, I sat and watched it with my mother, who's been poorly. And I've been up looking after her for the last 12, 18 months. I've been in north of Scotland, so I've been doing a bit for that. But we watched the game and I thought to myself, I actually played okay. <laughs> I actually did all right that game. And, and, and it was a game that obviously is infamous for the Gaza goal. And of course I was involved. Um, what I do say to people that wants to, and you get ribbed about that goal all the time, but what I have said to people is that, yeah, Gaza's not won a premiership. Um, he's not got that in his locker. And on top of that, it's really taken, arguably, England's greatest ever footballer to do, to do that to me. So there's an argument out there that I throw back, I throw it back to the public as to, and in, in, in good jest and everything else. Um, but yeah, no, it was, it was, it was interesting. But I didn't, I did think I played well that day. <laughs> well, it's, it's a weird scenario because when I first found out that I was going to get to interview you, obviously I was, I was delighted because. You know, I'm a student journalist at the minute, so it's any interview yes. is a good interview, and especially with someone who's played as many games as you. I think you've had like over 500 career games, you know. Uh, yeah, and I put yeah. it, I put it in the group chat with my mates, and a few of them did mention that Gaza moment, but one of them's a yeah. City fan, and um, you know, we've got you know sort of Bolton fans on the course, well, fans like that. Yeah. And, um, I mean, we were all born in 2000, 2001, you know, before before you know. Yeah, I mean, I think you re retired not so, not so maybe two thousand. Yeah, probably. Yeah, three yeah was, exactly. Yeah, two thousand three. But it shows kind of like what effect you had as well. And I mean, City weren't the biggest of clubs back then. You know, they've only sort of in the two thousand and tens grown as a as a football club. What's it like for you um, now? Sort of meeting fans that weren't born at the time, but they talk to you about times like is it is it weird for you? Well, no, because the reason that happens is because of social media more than anything else. I mean, in our day, or say 20 years ago, Ash, for example, you'd had to go back and get a paper or, or wait for the news or the TV, anything. And, and, and all that was in a formation. Anything on the TV was, you knew when it was going to come on. It wasn't something you could just go and watch there and then. There was no internet where you could just access footage, look at it there and then, consume it and enjoy it and then process it sort of thing. Um, it's the way of the world, you know, and the good thing, I mean, I'll be really honest with you, Ash, if I was walking down a street now and there's a player from even the Premiership Football Club, from a, doesn't have to, any Premiership footballer, and somebody was expected to, for me to know him, and it, there's a good chance I wouldn't know him. There's a real good chance I wouldn't know him. Um, I think in my day, it was a bit more pinpointed where people knew about people because, or players, because the, it, wasn't, it wasn't a wash in the people's minds. You know, you, had, you, you used to watch football on, this, on a Wednesday night, for example, or a Saturday night, you'd watch sports night on a Saturday night or sports scene in Scotland, for example. Um, Saturday afternoons, you would never see a game of football on TV apart from internationals, the home internationals. The World Cup stood out on its own, the Euro stood out on its own. But really, until Sky came along, Sky TV, then that's when things developed and moved forward. Um, so, yeah, people know of me now. But, and I think the thing is as well is, is, is that because people of your ilk, your age, your, your, your era weren't around, then you'll only read and find out about bits that are synonymous to a lot of people 
and who understand and significant significant things that, that have happened in football, such as the Gaza goal sort of thing. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's still nice to be recognised. It's still nice to be known and everyone else. And I can still run about, so I'm okay. I'm not doing too bad. I think the, obviously the the main thing that sort of us in the the northwest mainly um, know about you is obviously that Blackburn Tart winning in '94, '95. I think it were. Um, obviously, you were there a few years before that happened, yeah. but you you were initially there, but you went back, didn't you? And I'm just wondering. Um, I can't remember when Kenny Dow's leash came in, but obviously for you um, in your early days of your career, and even during your career, I'm assuming maybe Kenny was someone you looked up to. Did that play a factor in Kenny, why you went back? Kenny was my boy who died old. Kenny was. He left Celtic to go to Liverpool in 1977. He was the focal point of the Scottish national team. Um, people used to say when he went to Liverpool that, and he played for Scotland that he wasn't the same player when he played for Scotland. And the, the theory was that he wasn't playing the same calibre of player for Scotland that he was playing for Liverpool, which, hey, it's up to the, the, to the eye of the, behold, the, the, of the beholder, really. Everybody's got their opinion and they can judge it any way they want. But Kenny did play in an extremely successful Liverpool side who won everything, won in Europe um, as well as. Um, but when he was manager at Blackburn and they came back calling for me to Man City, I didn't really think twice about that. I felt I'd unfinished business at Blackburn. So when I went back in 91, it was great for me to think that I was going to be part of, a, of a, an, an, up, an uprising of Blackburn Rovers when you've got Jack Walker, who it wouldn't have been possible for, for at all without him. Kenny Daglish and Ray Harford with the, the, the management, the coaching team. And it was a great mixture. <clears throat> it really, really was. It was something that we felt, everybody felt that was involved in could achieve something that they've possibly not achieved before. And there was no mention, Ash, about winning the league, but winning the Premiership. That was never part of um, anything that anybody spoke about. It was just about being successful and really a five-year plan to get into Europe. So the first year the Premiership came along, um, the idea was to get into, into Europe um, within five years and within three years we won the Premiership. So, you know, um, we were successful in that, right? Just touching on sort of that season, um, what was it? I mean, you, you mentioned about the, the the treble and about how that might sort of pip this uh, that title, and just because of you know you're you're from Scotland, it's you know it's kind of I think I'd be the same to be honest. Um, that team that you had, you know, obviously you had like Tim Sherwood, Alan Shearer, um, you know the likes of Chris Sutton as well. I think um, mm -hmm. would, would you say that's probably the best collective team you've played with? Well, I was at Rangers not for not so long, but, and we had some phenomenal footballers at Rangers at that time. Giovanni van Bronckhurst, who went on to win the Premiership with Arsenal and win La Liga with Barcelona. Um, and Andre Kanchelskis, who did so well with Manchester United. Arthur Newman. Left back who played for Holland as well, Stefan Kloss, German national German goalkeeper. There were so many players of an international stage, I would say, at Rangers at that time. Whereas the Blackburn Rovers team was, with the exception of Alan, I would say, and we wouldn't have won the league without Alan Shearer. I've got to say that as well as is that we were very workmanlike. Um, there wasn't any, there wasn't, there's was no airs, no graces in relation to anybody, any one individual. We realised that Alan would take the centre stage because if he did the hardest thing in a football pitch was to score goals and scored goals consistently um, for the benefit of Blackburn Rovers and for England. Um, but we were very, very workmanlike and we played a 4-4-2 a, a and in a situation where there was no hiding place when you played in that, that, that formation. So really anybody could get dug out if they didn't perform, if they didn't pull their weight. But we were a good side. We were a good team. And I would say that that was the best team that I've probably played in as a unit. Um, I've got to say as well as that when I played for my national team, I played in some really good sides, good teams, good understanding of how to play, how to play the system, and achieved results because of that under Craig Brown. So a bit different domestic football to international football, but 
the Blackburn team, you know, yeah, it's it's it's, it's I, I wouldn't compare the tre- the treble with Glasgow Rangers to the, to winning the Premiership with Blackburn, because you're going to get an argument for both sides and certainly both sides of supporters as well as. Um, but winning the winning winning the league with Blackburn was something that was never really expected. I think there's an expectancy at Rangers to win the league, but to win the treble maybe not expected. So you can put that into some sort of comparisons. Just a final point for that that Blackburn season. Um, I was looking at some of the stats, and it seemed like the players that were playing were the ones that featured throughout the season. So I think you played something like thirty eight games. Um, Tim Sherwood played yeah, the 40, 30, yeah. 39, yeah. And it, was that the? the I don't think Alan Shearer. Alan, Alan, Alan never missed a game. I think Alan Shearer. I think Alan Shearer played every game. Do you, you think, think that was? Correctly. Do you think that was what Kenny Dalglish was sort of looking at? He, you know, he had that consistency. He had a group of players that he trusted. Well, yeah, we knew we knew what to do. You see, we knew week in week out. And um, back in the day, twenty years, twenty five years ago, when we did win it. Um, Change it. Things have changed now, but players were allowed to have a bet. They allowed to have a bet on football, footballers. And every every home game would come in. Every second week would come in, and we'd sit in the dressing room, good half an hour before the team meeting at one or half past one. And Tim would say, "Tim, shout to right. What's the bet today, then, lads?" It was the same bet every two weeks. Sheer it, score first, Blackburn to win. Never let us down, Ash. That never let us down. <laughs> um, and of course, it's all changed these days. You don't, you don't. If you're a footballer, a sportsman, or whatever, it's, you don't get involved in. That. But that was back in the day, um, and I think that reflected how uh, we, I wouldn't say how confident we were in going into each game when we played at Ewood during that season or the season before, or even the season before that. It was just a matter of we were that conscious of producing that. And capable of producing that, and we expected to produce that. Um, we weren't overconfident in any shape or form, but we did judge and value each other's contribution as a team member. And as a, and as a team, we were exceptional. And I think that's, that's the reason, that's the one and sole reason as to why we achieved the results. Just um, sort of moving away from Alan Shearer and, and Blackburn, um, we're going to talk about you you know, your international career, you said that one of your proudest moments was becoming the captain. I just want mm. to touch on, you got your first inter- international cap at about 27, I believe. Um, yeah. I just want to know, what was it What was it like coming into the squad as, I mean, what's class now as a, a more senior player? Obviously, we're seeing it with England with, with sort of Jamie Vardy. What's it mm. like for, for you coming, at, coming in at sort of a late stage of your career? Well, I, I can compare that against anything because you're playing for your country. Um, at the highest level so there was no comparison to be made as to what I'd gone through before or what I've experienced before but I never ever thought it'd pass me by but you never say never that's the one thing for any budding footballer or any footballer that's even in the game as a professional now who's got aspirations to play for their country and they're a bit older I mean only last year Andy Considine from Aberdeen at the age of 31 had his first cap for Scotland and it's a great story because when he stepped in, when others weren't around or available, he did a great job. Now he's in every squad, or he's been in every squad since. And he might not start, he might not get a jersey, but he's been considered because of his contribution and what he's given to the national team. And it's a nice story, it's a great story. So from my point of view, I went on after that first cap at the age of 27, as you say, to make 51 caps. Um, I capped in my country 26 times. Um, great honours for me. And to get into the Hall of Fame of the 50 caps was great as well. as And to play in the Euros in 96 and to, to captain my, my country in, in the World Cup in 98 as well. You know, and, and that's been far-fetched for any Scotland player or Scotland fan. And <laughs> Yeah, that would never... That's something that I've, I've, I've never ever dreamt of, to be fair, at the age of 27, that I would get so many caps and play in these tournaments. But, yeah, we were talking about how distant that's been. But this summer, of course... Scotland are back in the Euros and of course they're playing England at England, uh, Wembley. So I'll get a couple of jobs, I think. I'll get asked a couple of quotes, no doubt, to provide before then because of what happened in 96, um, 20, 25 years ago. Um, I know it's Euro 2020, which would, 
effectively be 24 years ago, but this summer it's going to happen and it's something to look forward to, not just for an England fan, but for a Scotland fan, more so, I'd say. Definitely. It's one of the things, I think um, it was weird because we were watching that game where um, your keeper, where he made that penalty save, um, and it were like, we were happy because it was like... Yeah, what game? which game is that? It, I think it was the game that he qualified where the your keeper made that penalty save. Um, I think you went to a, a shootout. I can't remember who were it against, but it's what sent you through. Or oh, least. yes, against uh, Serbia when we beat them 5-4 last year. Yeah, 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 yeah. Marshall, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and we, weren't, were... we weren't fancied. We weren't fancied at all. We no. weren't fancied at all, you know. We weren't, we weren't, but Steve Clark has done a good job with Scotland and we've gone from strength to strength to strength and I see I see things within the setup of the national side the national team in a similar manner as to when I played and we qualified and we made it to tournaments there was a similarity in relation to how that came about um, where really the, our strength was being difficult to beat um, and Scotland have certainly proven that recently, been difficult to beat. And we are about to enter some new qualification games this week. Um, but we can't, I can't wait to the summer because obviously there's going to be the banner's going to be brilliant because of Scotland England game. I think it's definitely the game we all need. Uh, I think it's yeah. Funnily enough, I'm getting married in the summer, hopefully. And uh, my uh, my stag. Hopefully, is, yeah. My uh, my stag do is on that day, so we're on the um, really? Scotland game. So we're really? open, open right. to, to book a, a venue. Right. Uh, well, I'll be texting. I've got your number now, mate. So when that result comes <laughs> back through, and forth I'll be all texting. Day. Yeah, I'll be texting you exactly what's happened. <laughs> um, just touching on your uh, international career again. Obviously, you were you were made captain, like you said. When you found out the first time that you was going to captain, how did that conversation come about? Well, it was Craig Brown. He just said to me that if anything happens to Gary McAllister and he's, he's, he's unavailable, he said, I'd like you to step in as being the captain, Colin. And I've gone, not a problem. Delighted. I mean, I'd captained every club I played for. Every team I played for, I'd captained them anyway. Um, so for me, it was great. It was just that when the World Cup came round in 98, we missed Gary McAllister as a captain, I'd say, but also more because of a footballer. Because Gary McAllister, for me, was, and I've said this on record many times, probably the greatest footballer that I played with. Um, and that's not um, any slant against Alan Shearer. Alan was a striker, an out striker, world-class striker, scored goals everywhere. And, you know, he's holding records for fun. And if he had gone on to a bigger club than Blackburn Rovers, because there are bigger clubs than Blackburn Rovers in the world, he would have been probably successful with them as well as. But as an all-round footballer, uh, Gary McAllister as a captain as well he could do everything um, and I got a phone call in the December before the summer of 96, December 95 to say from a journalist to say that uh, Gary had been injured in a comeback match, he said oh I'm sorry to hear that, I said but he's coming back anyway I said which is good, it's part of his, his rehabilitation to be back for us in the summer for the, for the Euros and he said well I don't think he'll make it Colin because he's done his ACL and he's probably going to miss the World Cup which would mean Unfortunately for him, but a bit of good news for you, you're going to probably captain Scotland in the World Cup. And I never, I never really at that point, and at any point, did I take any gratitude from the fact, thinking that I was going to be captain. Because it was all about having your strongest team out there, your best team, and having the best chance of winning a game of football. And you're playing the World Champions. And when you've got a player like sort of Gary McCaster, as I said earlier, the greatest footballer I'd played with, um, to be missing from the team was a massive disappointment. Just fast forwarding it to, to your last game for Scotland, uh, I think it was against San Marino and you scored twice, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the San Marino game was my last game and I'd scored a half volley with my right peg, I'd scored a half volley with my left peg. Come in at half time, we're winning and Craig Brown says, try and get your hat trick. Try and get your hat trick because you're going re to rewrite the record books because I'm sure he said to me, we haven't had a hat trick scored since... 1980 or 1970-odds, a Scotland player scoring a hat-trick in, in an international game. So every free kick, every corner kick, I was up. And 
the, uh, there was an incident in the game where there's a, there's a corner kick and I was getting man marked and the man marker um, was pinching me from behind on my back, pinching, continually pinching me. And I didn't turn around and look at him and then like that. But if you can imagine in, in, a, in a normal, in any wake of life, you are getting annoyed by somebody, what you're going to do is shrug them off. And that's all I tried to do. But I wasn't looking at him when I was shrugging him off with my elbow. So if you can imagine someone nipping you from behind and you're trying to shrug them off with that, it's a two-way street. And of course, he'd fell, he'd slipped, and I've caught him with my elbow on his chin and apparently knocked him out. He wasn't knocked out. He wasn't unconscious, nothing like that at all. He played on it. He got stretchered off. He waved to the Scotland crowd as he got stretchered off. I retrospectively got a three-match ban, which I was disgusted at because it was a, it was a nothing. They played on it. Typical Italians. I thought it was San Marino. Typical Italians. And then, because I, cause I, um, I appealed the three-match ban, they decided to double it to a six-match ban. And that was the end of my career. Um, and then Bertie Vogts took over. He was the next manager after Craig Brown, and I never ever got a letter to say thanks very much for my 51 caps and my contribution to my national side or my, my national team. I got nothing. So that was the end of my career for Scotland, which was a bit, it, it, it died sadly. But um, no, I, I'm quite proud of what I've, my contribution to, to my country and, and what we achieved within that time. I think looking back, I think realistically, that's probably one of the very few laws internationally. I mean, a lot of people play for mm. the national side, and even though you were a defender. Um, you know, you scored a lot. Of, you know, quite a few goals from. You know, you scored. Um, you know, at club level as well, quite quite a few. Obviously, you played striker here and there, but as a defender, yeah. a goal a goal is a goal. Uh, and obviously, you, you captained them as well. So I think looking back on it, you can't really um, can't really turn that up. But you're also going to be captain in in July for this charity game, aren't you? Yes. Yeah, I'll be a captain of um, Lions Eleven. Um. We're strong. We've got a strong. We've got a strong side out. So you're um, happy with the team. I'm fancying double figures. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, listen, I've got history with Hollyoaks, the Hollyoaks boys. I've got a good history. It's a bit up and down, um, but it's all about winning. Ash, I mean, why bother playing the game? Yeah, it's fun. There's money to be raised for a good cause and everything else. I've got to win it, mate. I'm, I'm, you've got to win it. I don't play any other way apart from winning a game. Of, if I play in a game of football, I play to win. And unfortunately, if somebody gets in the way and I mistime a tackle and I'm a bit late or whatever, I'm a bit older these days and I catch someone, so be it. Tough. In a way, though, this is kind of the stuff we want to wear because I think we see too often. Yeah. And, I mean, charity games, it's, it's, it's fantastic. We're going to touch on hmm. exactly what, what it's for, but you turn up to see a game. I mean, I went to watch... Uh, Manchester United legends versus buying for the for the ninety nine sort of thing, and I mean yep. Yepsan was was bullying their <laughs> their, mm. their players and he, he didn't care. But uh, no. yeah, if you that's can, the way it would be. You that's the way to be. You've got to you've got to be like that because and that's the way I would be as well. And I mean I've got a run in with a couple of the lads from the Hollyoaks team and hey listen they're in fact they're twenty twenty probably twenty five years younger than me, probably more than that. So you know it's. Uh, 30 years younger than me. Some of them's in their 20s. And, yeah, I mean, I still do a bit for Poppy May and Blackburn. I still play a bit Sunday League for Blackburn and Blackburn for Poppy May in the Sunday, the Open Sunday League. So I still do a bit there as well. as. But, of course, for the last year, with what we've had with COVID, etc., then obviously my legs have not, well, they've not been playing footy, but I've been cycling loads, off-road cycling. I've done loads of stuff like that. But I've not been playing a game of footy, so it might, I might be a wee bit rusty, mate, when I get back in there. An early prediction for used double figures. I'd be I'd be disappointed. I'd be <laughs> absolutely gutted. With Kevin Gallagher in the team and Big Bamba, Big Big Saul next to me and Stephen Jones and uh, there's too many to mention. Kev Gallagher mentioned Kev. You've got these players. I'd be I'd, I'd be gutted um, if we do not get double figures against that mob. Uh, the uh, the event organizer, obviously, we know him by Tony. Um, yeah, he, he wants me to mention your son, who's at St Johnson. So, what, um, yes, is, what's he like as a as a player? Is he is he like you in, in well, any Cal way? No, Callum's completely. Different. He's a striker. Um, same height. He's going to stick in at that position. He's going to. He's going. He's twenty three now. 
Um, he's on loan at this moment in time. He's not at St. Johnston. He's at a bigger football club. He's at Aberdeen on loan. He's already scored there. They've had a change of manager, which is not good for anyone because that changes the whole um, facet on team selection and formations and tactics and how, how, how he sees things. But there's a new manager been appointed. Um, but yeah, Callum's doing okay. I mean, he, he, he's had to fight hard and battle through two real career-threatening injuries on his ACL. He did his ACL twice on the same knee, so he's missed a couple of years of his development because of that. But he's a professional footballer, and he's got an opportunity to keep going and to get better at what he's doing, so he's doing okay. And um, obviously, you've, you know, you'll be a big factor in sort of his career to this point. Is there anything that he has in his game that you can see was in yours? Yeah, I mean, he's, he's, still, he's, he's 23, but he's, he's like a 21-year-old, only because of the development that he's missed out on. Um, he's, he's, got, he's got the physical attributes, no, no two ways about that. He's probably a more intelligent footballer than I was, because I ended up as a centre-back, which you don't need to be too intelligent, so they say, except I did end up reading the game better than I did actually having to run around. Um, but... No, he's he's got an opportunity in the game as as a professional footballer, and it's you know if he can make it as a as a for a career, you know that's brilliant. That's a great that's great for him. Definitely. Uh, going back to this this game in in July, um, Tony told me you know you've done a lot of work with him. Why for you? Why do you do you do it, and why do you work with Tony and, and these charities? Well, to be fair, Ash, I think I've been quite lucky in my life. Well, I've had some unlucky things in my life as well as, um, which I suppose, being who I am, is pretty well documented all over. Um, you could, well, the history books, social media, whatever you want, you, you want to call it. Um, but I just feel that I'm in a position to give a little bit back to help people that maybe haven't seen or been at the heights that I've been at, but if I can help them in any shape or form, put a smile on their face, make them laugh, tell them a story, have a bit of banter with them. Um, it's, it, it, and it helps them. Because, I mean, it's not just, I think, we, we, motor neuron and Len and his issue at this minute in time. There's, throughout the last 12 months, I think mental health in itself has been an extreme struggle for a lot of people out there because of the situation we've been in. So I just think being friendly and being nice and, and giving up something that if you've got, and I've got a bit of time, I like to keep fit. I like to contribute. If it helps Tony earn or raise the funds that's needed in order to what he thinks is appropriate for that respective charity, then I'm part of it for him. Um, he's been great. I mean, he, he really does go out on a whim to try and help everybody and, and everything and he's got a bit of time on his hands and he, and he instead of wasting it he's trying to help charities and help people throughout the difficult times and listen as i said earlier just a second ago that yeah i've had my own issues in my life but there's always someone worse off than yourself um and if you can help them in any way it's it's it's, it's great to see just that little bit of upturn for them definitely Tony told me that he's been doing this for, for 27 years, these charity events. How did you, you, well, yours and his relationship come about? Oh, Tony just threw the blue. I got a message, I got a, an email or a photo or a text for Tony just to say, call, you won't know me, you, I'm this, blah, blah, I do this. And I'm like, yeah, keep, count me in. Count me in. And, and, and since then, I think a lot of things, I mean, the only thing about Tony doing it 27 years is that every year he said, that's my last one. That's my last yes. one. And it's never, it's never his last one. He keeps going. But God bless him. Him and Cynthia, um, his wife, who's been, she's, she's been poorly as well as Cynthia. She's they're a great couple. And I mean, you, and with, behind every great man, you've got to have a really, really great woman. Um, so the two of them, they're well matched. And he's, he's done marvellous. He really has, what he's done to help some of the charities over the years is pretty commendable. Definitely, and you, you mentioned before that you know these these events that you know it's great for the charities, but for a personal, personally for you, it's about you know being competitive again and, and, and enjoying the day, enjoying the game. So, how yeah. much do you actually like enjoy 
playing these matches and, and the build up for him. It's the closest thing you're going to get to been what I was in the past. You know, I mean, as I said earlier, I'm out on the bike all the time. That's my exercise, mountain biking, off-road. Nobody can ring me or see me or I just go and do my thing for an hour, an hour and a half a day. That's what I do. I'll be doing that this afternoon. Um, but I just, it's as just, it's just, it's just close as you're going to get. I'm 55 now, Ash. I'm no spring chicken there. So, and I still think I can do it when I was like 25. So the day the day comes that I can't do it or I think I can't do it will be the day that I can't run. If I can't run around, that'll be the day I'll know that then that's that's it finished for me. So God help the day God help that day for me when it does come because I'll be pretty gutted. But and it'll come because age you know, everyone everyone gets older and older and older and that's part of the process of life. But at this minute in time I'm still enjoying keeping fit. And I'm looking forward to the game. And as I said earlier, I'm going to be catching a few because I'm older. And, I can, and I'm, I'll apologise now to the, the Hollyoaks team. I'm apologising now to you for catching you on the day. I might get a yellow card. I'll not get a red. I'll talk the referee out my red card before the game. <laughs> there you go. And it'll be double figures. That's what it's all about. July 18th, 3pm yeah. kickoff at Bamber Bridge. Still plenty of tickets left for sale as well so I'll leave them in the uh, the description of this as well as all the charities involved 